Hi, everyone. Welcome to season three of the Passion and Purpose podcast with myself and these amazing guys that are here today. I am so excited for season three because we're going to be talking about one of the most significant things that I've ever been a part of in my life, Mm. and that is Passion 2024. And we're going to start that today with a conversation with Christian, Mel, and Brett, just talking a little bit about the journey to Passion, the journey to the Benz, and particularly as you guys were carrying the songs for Passion 24 Mm -hmm. uh, all year long, and then seeing how God moved in the midst of those songs and in our midst while we were in that place. So welcome, Brett. Great having you on Great to be here. Uh, Brett is a very special friend of mine. (laughs) um, Special guy. Honored. Yeah. Honored. And the family. Yes. And uh, Christian Stanfield, Mm -hmm. Melody Malone. Thank you guys for joining the Passion and Purpose podcast. I'm excited. Absolutely. We're happy I'm to excited. be here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we have this not been great. in a great. face-to-face conversation, the four of us, mm-hmm. since Passion. That was a 40 days ago Wow. when we walked out wow. of the bins. And um, wow, you know, I, I'm, I was talking to Levi Lesko yesterday, and I hadn't talked to Levi in real detail since Passion. And he and Jenny were going on and on about conference for the whole podcast we did together. Hmm. And the whole time, I just found myself feeling clunky, like I don't mm-hmm. know how to get the right words around yeah. mm-hmm. what we experienced at Passion this year. And we've had an amazing run of following God for 25 years-ish, and we've seen God do some incredible things. Yeah. But this year, you know, the, that that watermark on the tree is pretty high. <laughs> and um, the flood came through, and you can see the residual, I think, on every heart and every life that was in that wow. place. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I agree with you. I, it, trying to process has been clunky. I yeah. think that's a good word. And I've, I think I've figured out that part of it, I'm just supposed to leave a mystery mm. and just thank God for it yeah. and delight in it and praise him for it and, um, and just let it, let it be, you know. And people are going to, you know, hear the music and, and, watch some of these videos and recall some of these moments and they're going to feel and sense what God did in those moments. And that's beautiful. But then part of me wants, wants to understand and ask Mm -hmm. God for wisdom and say, what, what was it about the runway up to these days Mm -hmm. that, that set these days apart and Mm -hmm. that opened the door for you to do what you, what you did and what you're continuing to do. Right. Because I believe he's still doing it and the work he's doing on the earth, we're in it. Yeah. It's happening. And I want to be a part of it today. So so there's that weird dichotomy mm-hmm. of like, thank you, God. I don't need to understand all of what you're doing, but at the same time, I want to understand as much as, much as you want <laughs> me to. But I'd like to understand yeah. some yeah. of it. Yeah. Because yeah. You're, yeah. you're saying yeah. I don't want to try mm-hmm. to formularize this and That's go, right. okay, right. because That's of right. A, B, and C, mm-hmm. this is what – uh, the result was, but at the same time, if there's something to be learned That's right. about navigating in that space mm-hmm. and preparing for that space mm-hmm. and for God to move in, in the ways that we saw him move at Passion this year, then by all means, uh, I want to be a part <laughs> of understanding that, being a part of it. Yeah. Let's let's just go back for a minute, and I know I'm not sure if we can even really get anywhere with going down this road, but let's just try. So uh, we released the video. Mm-hmm. of Agnes Day. So yeah. uh, you may have seen yeah. that already. It's mm-hmm. out everywhere. Um, the official video, there were lots and lots of videos from people's phones that are amazing. But um, Passion released the video, Six Steps Records did. And I hadn't seen any footage from conference until I saw that video. Wow. wow. I yeah. had not gone back and watched a session back. I hadn't yeah. gone back. I, d- I just wanted it all to stay right here, you yeah. know, like yeah. in my memory and the way that I felt it in the moment, yeah. felt him in the moment. But um, John Duke sent me a link to the video before um, they turned it in. And I was at home by myself. Shelly was at dinner with some friends. And, man, I just sat there and wept um, mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it was po- as powerful <laughs> watching it at home by myself as it was being in that stadium during that moment with 55,000 people. And the anointing is real. I'm telling you, it is not... I'm not hyping this up. It's it's still there. It's mm-hmm. still yeah. residual. And mm-hmm. the album is now out. A lot of you have been listening to the record already. came out on March 1st, uh, Call on Heaven. And, man, whoo, yeah. it's just all over it. 
you can just sense that God was moving and stirred in the place. But let's let's go back to Friday morning. It's the okay. last morning. It's not normally when you're expecting a big giant left turn yeah. uh, <laughs> in a three day gathering. Uh, it's the last session. You guys yeah. are trying to get some songs down. Um, but we're all expectant and we all are believing for something special. And in the middle of the set, you pull out Agnes Day and. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Lights out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Face down. Face down. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, <clears throat> just in the processing and thinking back through from beginning from January 3rd to the end of January 5th, the journey that we had been on was mm-hmm. so beautiful. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And the runway was always leading us to a moment like that. And we didn't, we couldn't have said it then, but we can look back now and say, yeah, we can see how. There were markers along the way. Yeah, it was building. It was building, mm-hmm. yeah. And um, even in the language, there was so much heaven language, holy, holy, holy language yeah. from the very beginning to the very end. And uh, I, I was telling you this the other day, Louis, but your talk on the night of the fourth, the magnitude of the cross, mm-hmm. that giant 70-foot cross uh, in the room, if not for that talk, we could never enter into that space, the Agnus Dei mm-hmm. space. Mm-hmm. How, how could we ever right. be in the presence of, of a holy God like right. that well. yeah. without the cross, yeah. and without the sacrifice of Jesus? And I, I remember thinking that face down on the stage that day, like what a miracle that mm-hmm. we can be in this moment right, right now. Right. And, yeah. th- and the shadow of that cross is, is like still being cast mm-hmm. on the stage. You know? <laughs> and uh Man, just think, just to think about that progression, and so many people had come come to faith and come alive in Jesus that previous night. They woke up the next morning, mm. yeah. To oh, worthy is the Lamb, holy, mm. holy, yeah. holy, and now they're looking around, going, "I couldn't have stood in this moment yesterday, but the door is open." Thank you, Jesus. And so, I just think about the progression of those days and how kind of God, how intentional yeah. of God, in His wisdom, to lead us. Yeah. through to that moment i totally agree with you in that like just the depth of the the preaching of the gospel throughout mm-hmm. those days and mm-hmm. to think about where people were that first night and where we landed yeah. that last morning mm-hmm. and you see the power of the gospel begin to change and transform people so it's it's a different whole different group of you know 50 plus thousand people uh, singing you might even be singing the same song you were singing on the first night but right. your heart has been like totally turned upside down by yeah. by God's grace yeah. and and I, I just think about how that was just he was worshiped and then the gospel was preached he was worshiped and that was just mm-hmm. building all the way through mm-hmm. I totally agree yeah 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 I love that we're you know this podcast kind of has a music theme because we're talking about the passion album uh, call on heaven uh, but already we're talking about preaching and worship yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. fired up about that <laughs> yeah, absolutely. because and if you're if you're listening to this conversation today and you're a worship leader or a pastor um, it's not one or the other right. it's right. always both yeah. the preaching of the word of God is what unleashes revelation and understanding yes. of God right. which then results in adoration of God and worship of God mm-hmm. which f- fuels us to go and proclaim the word of God and mm-hmm. to preach the word of God and it's yeah. that cycle of worship and word that's so powerful i think it's the you know the beauty of passion is our commitment to the preaching of the word and to Mm -hmm. the worship of the savior who Mm -hmm. is the word of god that's right and it's powerful it's beautiful Mm -hmm. so we're talking about the the three days from the third to the fifth it was a progression but let's go way back let's Mm -hmm. go back to like january of last year and just Mm -hmm. as we set our sights on passion uh, at church in january of last year we started saying we don't want to do business as usual. We right, want, right. don't want to just show up mm-hmm. and have another gathering and go through the motions. We want to make space for God to move. And that carried over into our preparation for yeah. conference. And mm-hmm. it was different last year yes. going up that mountain mm-hmm. than in some other years. It wasn't better or worse. It was just different. And even the fact that we didn't 
announce who was speaking or who was leading worship right. or yeah. who what friends yeah. were going to be there with us until the very very end and we only did it at the end so that people wouldn't be distracted during the <laughs> gathering going yeah. i wonder if so and so is going to be yeah. here tomorrow yeah. so we finally just said here's who's going to be here but it wasn't a promo it was really us telling the story of the movement of passion through the years and our hope for what would happen in this gathering summarized with that simple phrase call on heaven call on the god of heaven and see what will happen in the midst and that was the long arc of an entire year of expectation that god we just want to meet with you that's right yeah that's right yeah and i know for me a lot of that came out of being at asbury we were talking about it when you walked in um and i was only there for one night but i walked away that night thinking about passion Mm -hmm. and knowing that we were going to be in this football stadium and wanting that same hunger and that same sense of God's presence with his people and that same freedom that, you know, Asbury, yeah. a lot of, most of the time, the people in the seats were the ones leading the worship, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Not the people on the stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we, I knew coming into the bins, we, we got to make space to let these guys feel like this is us singing, not we're here watching y'all sing or being led by you singing, but this is us. I can hear yeah. me. Yeah. I can hear you. I can yeah. hear you. I can hear the guy behind yeah. me. This is us. This That's is right. our yeah. voice That's right. and yeah. our anthem. That's right. I remember having that conversation with you when you got back from Asbury. And it was it was more surrounding church and what was happening at Passion City Church in it, you know, every Sunday of just this desire for not yes for us to lead but also for the people to actually lead yeah. and for the people to take over and just encouraging us as leaders to know and to be sensitive to when should we step back from the mic you know and just let the people take it and so leading up i think the whole year sundays or wherever we were mm. there were all these always these moments where at least for me i was just like testing like and just seeing like okay are people going to take it are they are is there this sense of hunger and thirst and desire for god and sometimes and so sometimes i'd throw it out there and like nah, okay we're not there yet like that's not where we are collectively mm-hmm. as a group of people yet you know like it's just not that's not that's not today and that's not where we're at um so to so to see some moments mm-hmm. like that happen throughout the year but then to get to session six and I was just like, I do, I had this one moment where I really thought, I was like, it's, it's happening. Like, it's mm-hmm. actually like this, this desire that we've had this whole year, like God is doing that. He yeah. is like, he is actively putting that desire and that hunger and there's Psalm 63. Like, that is what I felt like. I was like, man, yeah. this is happening in this space right yeah. now. And it's so individual. Um, but it, it was just the culmination who, I don't know if that's the right word or not, yeah. but um, of what we had talked about when you mm-hmm. got back from Asbury and just seeing that day in and day out at church and just then seeing that hunger and thirst in this generation was mm-hmm. was just beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I think also the word readiness yeah. comes to mind. And I, I do, I think you putting that banner over our gatherings last year, not business as usual, just set such a great tone yeah. you know when something is business as usual you can kind of phone it in mm-hmm. like you know yeah. what to expect this is just business as usual plug and play man it's like just cookie cutter this thing but when it's not business as usual you are pitched forward the entire time mm-hmm. what is happening next where are we going what are we doing yeah and the whole year it felt that way like we were pitched forward going what now where are we going now? And even in our preparation for conference, I think one of the first times I felt that was we had a um, programming production meeting about passion in August. And it was an hour long. And I was actually driving to Nashville to do some writing. So I was zooming in. And you took the first half hour of that meeting and led us to be still, mm-hmm. be silent, and just hear from God and and then then we then after some silence we spoke out what are some pictures what are some words what are some prayers that are rising to the top that was the first 30 or 45 minutes of the meeting and we're just we're just praying and sharing you know dreams and 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 words about passion and then the last 15 minutes we maybe got to a few like (laughs) (laughs) a few things we need to talk about this but I remember hanging up that call and going that was different 
<laughs> that we are on a different track here. And that that was how the, the whole trajectory yeah. felt leading up to conference. Yeah, Shelly and I in March were at a tennis tournament in Miami. Mm-hmm. They hold it uh, around the football stadium and the main uh, – big court is actually in the stadium Mm. and we were having a big phone call around how are we going to tell the story of passion 2024 Mm. and so some of our film guys uh, were on the call um, some creative folks from our team and we're sitting out shelling me in the parking lot and we're with some friends uh, I won't say who they who they are uh, but most people know them and they had gone in and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I have, we have to take a phone call. And they're like, we're at the tennis tournament. You know, you <laughs> run passion. Can't you have somebody else take the phone call? I'm like, no, we actually work, you know, so <laughs> we'll be in the phone call. So yeah. we're sitting in the car, we're on the phone. And um, the person just laughed at me um, the whole rest of the, of the day. Like, wow. well, don't bother Louie. He's got to probably gotta go take a phone call. call. You know, <laughs> he's got <laughs> work to do. He's yeah. got to be somewhere. He's yeah. got to get on a conference call. And it's like, <laughs> uh, you know, about what? About a promo video. A promo video. You're on a phone call. We're in here at the tennis tournament. You're talking about a promo video. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yes, I was. But we made this video. Our film team made this incredible video. Yeah. The first one yeah. we released, it didn't have any words on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like it didn't show anybody on a stage. It didn't show anything flashy. It just showed the hunger yeah. of tens of thousands of students yeah. coming to these mm-hmm. gatherings. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the most powerful videos we've ever made it to tell is. a story yeah. of passion. And from that moment until that Friday morning, it was just, God, we don't want yeah the normal route right. we want you right. yeah. and if we don't get you this whole thing in my for my money is going to be a bust yeah, yeah. Right. i mean it's a packed stadium it's yeah. a big deal there's a lot of great content but if you don't show up and move in a Absolutely. powerful way it's going to be a huge bust yeah. Yeah. for for all of us and when um you guys all just got out of the frame and everybody's down on their knees or face or just with God and the people have now taken over and they're they're doing their best in a in a football stadium but you got like three Agnes days going <laughs> yeah at some point you got the 300 yeah. going yeah, and sure. you got the yeah. floor section uh-huh. going and you got a little echo coming up here mm-hmm. and then Jeff Lawson you know just mm. totally led by the spirit yeah. That's right. yeah. just gently puts his hand on the mm-hmm. keyboard and he's like okay guys this is the rhythm here we mm-hmm. are here we are, and all of a sudden, all the voices came back together, right. That's right. and the volume just went, yeah. And then something just lifted off in the place. That's right. It was mm-hmm. so otherworldly, <laughs> and you know, I'm up in the stands, just sitting there, just like, oh <laughs> Lord, oh my gosh, and the wave just kept coming, and it kept coming, and it kept coming, and I. I had the thought right in that moment, being the guy who was, you know, in charge enough to be in a promo video call. <laughs> um, I thought this might go all day. Yeah. Mm. Christine Kane most likely not speaking this morning. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't know where this is going to go, right. and it was the best feeling of just <laughs> knowing that we were with God. And yeah. I, had, I'm talking a lot. I would love you guys to pitch in. But I had since that the, ne- the morning before um, mm-hmm. woke up, had this impression on my heart uh, day and night, night and day, went yeah. found that text, yeah. came in. I wanted again, I wanted to start that day with us just hearing ourselves sing. So we just started singing worthy of it all, just voices in the arena. Yeah. And then Carrie and Cody took over and started leading, and then they had this video package in their second or third song. It was our God all Reigns. Yeah, the yeah. lyrics from the passage that I had just read, yeah. Yeah. and that was in yeah. your heart and in you guys' heart and yeah. journey. And yep. and I was like, oh man, the Holy Spirit is <laughs> got I love all this weaving yeah. together oh, yeah. right now. And I just oh, yeah. was like, I love that we're, moment. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. 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 I looked over at you, and you looked at me and said, I didn't know they were doing that. <laughs> And I look I back and said, know. I know you, you didn't, didn't know. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Talk about yeah. Uh, some of the things in y'all's heart mm-hmm. in terms of preparation. What was God stirring you in the months, mm. weeks before we walked in yeah. to the bins? Mm. I think, I mean, I think just in that same spirit, I mean, being at 
being at Asbury and um, and just being at our young adults here and um, mm-hmm. just seeing that real hunger mm-hmm. for God um, was such a, a huge thing. I think somewhere in the midst of the summer, God led me uh, to this passage in John 1 uh, where Jesus has this interaction with Nathaniel and he basically sees him and that blows Nathaniel's mind. And which I just felt like that was such a word for this generation. It's just like, see me, see me, see me. And Jesus like, I do. But then at the end he goes, yeah, but (laughs) you're going to see much greater things than that. You're going to see the heavens open up and angels ascending and descending on the son of man. And I just took that as a word from Jesus that he wanted to lead us Mm -hmm. into the greater things, into that Mm -hmm. open heaven. And so that was something for me, especially just coming down into like writing some Mm -hmm. of these songs and just like, Yes. I was just going, God, are, are we, are, we've, we have seen you do so much, but there's even more. Like, yeah. there's so much more, and I want people to see you for who you really, really are. So I think that was just a huge uh, thing that I just was carrying through the fall as we would go to different campuses and different things mm-hmm. like that. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah I think yeah. for me, it's, it's fun. You know, conference is always right after Christmas. <laughs> So, which can be crazy, but there's also the journey of Advent that you go on for Christmas, which I actually love that that coincides with leading up Mm -hmm. to conference. And for me this year, I just really spent a lot of time thinking about Mary and the scripture that just basically talks about how, you know, she was surrendered to the will of the Father, you know, really and truly, and just said, let it be unto me, let it be to me according to your word. Mm -hmm. And I think just in life, in conf- for conference as well, but just in life, I just had this, this idea and this, this thought that I really wanted to be a space for God to come and dwell, mm-hmm. like in my life. Mm-hmm. I want to be completely surrendered. Like Jesus came and God did what he did in her life in the space of her surrender. Mm-hmm. And so I wow. just said, I want to be a space for God and I want to be a space for people and just be surrendered to whatever that is. And I woke up, I remember waking up the morning of conference because it's just, it's beyond anything that you'll ever be able to feel like you have control of. (laughs) And I like being Mm -hmm. in control and I like doing all of that. And I just had to say, let God be God. Like all of these moments, anything, whatever is gonna happen, I just need to let you be you because you, I don't wanna actually be in control of this because I can't be in control of this. Mm -hmm. That would be awful. I just want to be surrendered to whatever you have in in this space and I want to be a space for you whatever that means and I want to be a space for people to encounter you and so I feel like that's what I saw actually happen Mm -hmm. and it was just this it was a gift I think for me just to see that he came and did that Um, and it was not about anything I did it was just literally about letting go and letting Mm -hmm. him be who he is that's great you know, I think other leaders that are listening maybe today are like, oh, man, that sounds a little dicey, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, just, you know, you, you want to you want to put a frame around an experience. And, you know, we've, I have a message to preach and we've got guests here and, you know, we've got a parking situation <clears throat> going on outside. And so we can't just like open, you know, our hands and say, God, come do whatever you want to do, because yeah. we got kids in bloom, totally. you know, <laughs> some parents yeah, need right. to go pick them up yeah. Yeah. at some point in time. Right. Mm-hmm. But I just want to encourage all of us to uh, <laughs> not be like that. Right. Yeah. We, we might be missing the miracle yeah. uh, because we're afraid it might get messy. And I, I just, you know, during those 20 minutes, I wasn't really thinking too too much about organizational leadership mm-hmm. or responsibility <laughs> or what time do we have to be out of here because it, it was catch it was taking my breath away. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, um, I I wasn't concerned that it was mm-hmm. going to mess anything up, yeah. right? Because it was beautiful mm-hmm. and um, yes, yes. Yeah. special yeah. and. Yeah heavenly and it was like who what could be messed up (laughs) we're experiencing the best of the best of the best yes yeah well and if i could say too i just feel like you and shelly lead with that tension really really well where it's that I, I really think at the the basement level, it's that hunger of like, I, we want that moment. <laughs> like we want mm-hmm. to be in the moment with mm-hmm. Jesus. We don't want to miss it. And we want to steward all the things that God's called us to steward and to put the right 
teams in place, the systems, the structure, just to do what we can do, you know. And um, but I think just but the the drive it feels like I feel like with you, from you guys into our team is like we want to be with Jesus yeah. and we want mm-hmm. people to see and know right. Him. And I, I feel like that just like permeates through our whole what we're trying to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it makes me think of something that you kept saying uh, to us as we would as we were gathering and praying at conference. God does what He wants, yeah. mm-hmm. when He wants, yeah. through whomever He wants to do it. Yeah, it's so good. And you kept saying that, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I just want to say that to every worship leader yeah. and every leader that God does what he wants, when he wants, through whomever he wants. I mm-hmm. think the our responsibility is to be ready for it. Mm-hmm. Are we are we listening? Are we watching? And when that time comes, do we know what to do mm-hmm. with it? Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. Are we moving with him yeah. and participating mm-hmm. with him in what he wants to do? He knows, he knows about uh, all the dynamics and all the time <laughs> and all the people and all the things. Um, but yeah. are we ready to move with him in those so moments? Yeah. And, um, in that moment, we had 20 minutes. We could, and we did. <laughs> and, and, and nobody was watching the clock. It was just like I didn't the, know it was 20 minutes. I didn't, I didn't either. either. It could have been had, three yeah, hours. I, yeah. I looked up, but when we got out, I was like, oh. oh. Yeah. 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 I had no idea. That's right. That's <laughs> but right. Yeah, and just really technically, we had uh, like more of the set we that we just didn't set. do, but because yeah. it didn't matter. You know, like that's mm-hmm. exactly what needed like mm-hmm. to happen. Yeah, all the things, you know, from my from my viewpoint just went right in that little yeah. window of God's goodness. And the sun is uh, shining through this window right here, right on my face. Mm-hmm. And that's making me think about uh, from where we were sitting, the sun was coming in the opposite windows at the bends and coming straight down on the stage. Mm-hmm. And I haven't asked our team if anyone went and measured uh, light angles before they decided how the B stage was going to go in the room because it was a little bit um, yeah. off center. Mm-hmm. And if anybody yeah. had gone, because I don't want to know the answer, I want to just live with the reality yeah. that I don't yeah. think I'm anybody did. We're yeah. living with the ignorance. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well. Uh, yeah, but, I you know, yes. it's just so crazy that um, God is stirring, God's moving. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And this gigantic but if you see it in a photograph you're just like oh they had these massive spotlights up in the top shining you know on the stage and it's like no there was a massive light but it wasn't anything man-made it was all god's doing Mm -hmm. of just putting it all in order Mm -hmm. in the right way at the right time and it was just powerful and when you when it ended i was like i don't know what christian's gonna do but you (laughs) apparently looked at brad Jones and just said, that's it, yeah. we're done. Yeah. And here, and so the set ended up being, what, 10 minutes over or something? Mm-hmm. Or maybe yeah. 10 yeah. minutes yeah. over, 15 yeah, minutes over, right. yeah. Just yeah. what yeah. it was like supposed that, yeah. to be. So it mm-hmm. felt like we spent an hour with God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yet here we are, we're still relatively, you know, within right. the realm of possibility that this <laughs> yeah. session is yeah. going to end on time. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the beautiful thing. It was like the five loaves and the <laughs> and the fish. Yeah. Uh, it was like God was multiplying the time somehow totally. exponentially yeah. and spiritually yeah. in the experience. And all this, maybe if you're listening, sounds kind of mystical. And it, it was. It, it was, was kind of mystical. And so we're not mm-hmm. lifting up a mysterious faith. Our faith is rooted in Jesus. Uh, we're, uh, we know Jesus through the revelation of the Word of God. We're not on some new age wavelength, but there is mystery in the stirring of the spirit of the living God among his people. And we tasted and we have seen that the Lord is good. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Talk about the record just a little bit. It's uh, 95 minutes long. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Has fourteen tracks on it. The last two Most tracks of it's are the a last half two hour. tracks. <laughs> <laughs> the last two yeah. tracks yeah. are a solid half hour. Yeah. <laughs> so people are going to get their money's worth. That's right. Yes. That's right. Um, a minute wasted. And I don't know. There's a lot of new songs. There was a lot of work that you guys did. Um, you and uh, some guys wrote a phenomenal song called "The Lord Will Provide," yes, which just went off in the room. <laughs> like yeah. I've rarely seen a song go off like that. <laughs> the first time it came out, yeah, it went off. Yeah. Wow! And yeah. uh, we released it a few days ago, and it's tracking faster or as fast as any passion song. People are mm-hmm. f- 
searching for that song mm -hmm. and want to experience uh, God in it. But you didn't lead it. I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> for all of us leaders who are yeah. in this conversation today, you wrote a great song that went off, but you passed it to somebody else on our team yeah. to lead and cheered them on, coached them, I heard, um, helped them kind of find their own voice in the song and then just enjoyed it with everybody else. <laughs> right. I did. Yeah. I did uh, enjoy it with everybody else. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, I, I love this song. Um, man, I love the, the truth in this song. It's something I've held on to throughout a lot of seasons of life where mm -hmm. I think we all s stress about where things are going, what's coming up in the future. And um, and God always leads yeah. me back to this Matthew 6, uh, where he's going, you know, if I'm going to take care of the flowers of the field, yeah. birds of the air, how, 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 why would I not take care of you? Wow. Yeah. And so it gives us a job to do. One job is to just to seek the kingdom. So trust God for the future, seek yeah. the kingdom mm -hmm. for today. Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that. And I think that's from the songwriting, st like for me, the songs that have come from a more personal place tend to have been the songs that yeah, do right. resonate yes. with right. yeah. Yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that I think was was really amazing. And then here you got Landon, who's just an amazing leader that's yeah. rising up here at our church. And he led it with such authority. And you know, there's a line in the song that says, I know my God's not empty handed. He gives us blessings upon blessings. It's a little against the ethos of the song. <laughs> it's for me to be like, no, I think I'd like to hold on to this song right now. But to, <laughs> but to yeah. just to be able to go like God, God get you know He's given this song, He's yeah. given us yeah. this truth, this hope. Why would I not open up my hands and 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 say yes? That's you know, especially as our team was kind of coming into those final moments, getting ready for passion, and mm -hmm. I was so happy and so proud of Landon in that in that moment, and then. And then to just see what that's doing, I, 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 was, I wasn't even, I was not on stage at that session that we first played it. And I just remember having this sense from God that, man, God, you must be calling this generation to something that's so great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that, and behind any great calling, you know there's gonna be hardship. Yeah. You know there's mm -hmm. gonna be heartbreak. And it's like, there was so much he like heaven language in our songs that's this, and I, we needed that. We needed that like mm -hmm. transcendent lift yes. up kind of stuff. Yeah. But we also know that we're still kind of moving through a broken world. And I just kept thinking, I think God wants to put this truth in their bag that mm -hmm. say, whatever he's calling you to, trust me, I'm mm -hmm. going to provide all those steps. So yeah. I, it, oh, and you know, I had a songwriter friend tell me a long, long time ago, he said, it doesn't matter who's singing the song. Our job is that the church is singing this yeah. song. Wow. And that really so freed beautiful. me up yeah. a long time ago. Beautiful. So, yeah. One of my favorite moments from that session was when that song was happening. Yeah. And you could like, oh my, this is like on fire. Yeah. And I remember standing at the back of the B stage and catching your eye. <laughs> yeah. Going, what? <laughs> I know. Because like, I I you were sitting like right over there uh -huh. at a perfect view. It was yeah. like such yeah. a great moment. Well, and I think it's like, it, as we were talking about Agnes Day and mm -hmm. this, it's like the, the goal isn't even, the, the, the songs aren't the goal. No. Being with that faith in God yeah, and right. being with yes. Jesus, like that's the goal. That's so right. yeah. however we get there, <laughs> I, right. I want to I get on the bus. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. yeah. That's so good. That's awesome. Christian, talk about um, the journey from you and Sean and Cody mm -hmm. uh, writing on He Who Is To Come. Talk about when the song kind of hit you. Mm -hmm. maybe as you guys were writing it and then kind of take us fast forward a little bit to the bends and seeing yeah. what was happening in the stadium. Man, I mean, I think... The I do remember you sending me the song yeah. though and saying, I'm, I'm real, real fired up yeah, about, this. Real <laughs> about this. Yeah. It did feel, you know, sometimes you, you work on songs and that day it, it felt like God had opened a door and let mm. us walk through and, and just catch a, a glimpse of again it's something he wanted to say and something he wanted to show us um, about the kingship of Jesus mm -hmm. and his coming kingdom mm -hmm. and that reality and, and and to be honest you know we were writing the song and you know we were passing around you know we had a few different resources on the table we had you know Bible open and a couple other books and we we're like passing things around and writing out and then when it was all completed I just remember looking at it like going, wow, before we go and carry this song, I need, I need to go, I need to go grow in my knowledge of what we're singing. Oh, mm -hmm. I love that. 
And so from about that, that month to the end of the year and started mm. a, a real journey for, for, for me personally. <laughs> and I had read through Revelation before and I had, I had studied some of that stuff, but really diving in and wanting to understand the imagery and the, mm. and the symbolism and, and the truth and catch a vision of that Jesus. So that when we stood up to lead that song at conference, we could do it with authority. Wow. Like we, we yeah. had already seen it. Mm-hmm. So we were leading from a place of revelation. And um, man, I, the first time we led it, I think was on the road to Passion 2024. I think we were somewhere in Alabama. Or I think we were in, we were yeah, somewhere in Alabama. Tuscaloosa. I remember leading it and going, man, I like that. Somewhere in Alabama. So Tuscaloosa. Sorry, yeah. Somewhere in Alabama. Was it Tuscaloosa? Tuscaloosa? Somewhere in Alabama. It was Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Okay, sorry. That's a good way to... <laughs> I think that's a good description of Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Somewhere in Alabama. <laughs> Somewhere in Alabama. <laughs> shout, out shout, the, shout out to the shout out, yeah. Roll shout tide. Out. It may not have been Tuscaloosa. We just have a Roll Tide fan here. And she's like, I'm going to get Tuscaloosa in there For one sure. way or the other. But it just was clear from the first time we led it that, you know, that especially that line, all this tension growing stronger. Yeah. I love that line. You know, it's just a mm-hmm. sign he's getting closer. He's yeah. already on the move. That resonated instantly mm-hmm. because we're all living in that yeah. tension. We're all living in that two kingdoms pushing up against mm-hmm. each other. Yeah. I mean, this kingdom of God is coming, but the kingdom of the world does not, kingdom of this world doesn't want that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're like in that, ah, oh, that, that wrestle. And so, man, what a, what a beautiful, hopeful thing to say, like just to announce the future yeah. in that way. Say, so here's where we're going. So the story's already been written. He's coming. New heaven and new earth. Mm-hmm. That's where we're headed. Yeah. And um, to stand, at, you know, and, and lead that at, at conference was just so beautiful just to set that that picture in the hearts of a generation mm-hmm. talk a little bit more about what you're saying we, we could lead with authority mm. um, this is something that I am really passionate about right now mm. you know it's just seeing people step into authority to lead if they have it you know everybody doesn't have a stewardship you know, equal Mm -hmm. authority. I don't think necessarily, I think some of that's anointing and it's the talents and I I don't know how any of that works, but I know that if you're going to step in front of a room or a house or a stadium, you have to have more than talent. You have Mm -hmm. to have some kind of Mm -hmm. spiritual authority Mm -hmm. in that moment. What does that mean exactly? And how would a worship leader start Mm -hmm. getting close to that if they don't know what that is or know if they have it? I can just speak for me. It starts with aligning my whole life mm-hmm. with the way of God and the word of God. Yeah. Like every part of my, every square inch of my life aligned with, with his heart and what he wants. And that means saying no to quite a few things. So I can say yes to other things. And as our lives align with him and we are face to face with him, and that intimacy grows and that you don't, it's, it's like you don't even really know that you're, co- you wouldn't even know if you'd call it authority. You're just leading mm-hmm. out of the overflow of mm-hmm. what, what yeah. you're experiencing. Yeah. So you're just in that. And, and then it, it works its way out. It, it bursts forth. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's a great way to that say is, it. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and so, uh, yeah, I think it's that, it's that intimacy, that alignment, that holy living. Mm. You know, setting yourself apart. And I've been <coughs> in Colossians and in Colossians 2 and then it moves into 3. It says um, it's not about don't do this, don't do this, don't touch this, don't taste this. It's not about that. Yeah. It's about set your minds on things above. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So if you that's the goal. So it's it's just look at Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look at Jesus and and just immerse yourself in the reality of his kingdom get his word so so inside of you that it's it's just what you're living and you're breathing and um and then th- the authority i think flow flows out from there you know um yeah mm-hmm. i agree <laughs> <laughs> i agree no i i, I agree because I, I i think um i i find it's the stuff of it's it's where things are happening in my life it overflows into the, the music is the overflow of, mm-hmm. of what's happening in life. And mm-hmm. so I think where I wrestle with God or where I'm needing to reorder or realign my life and 
uh, with him. And as I do that, I think that's that's where I, I when I see and experience his goodness and his grace and yeah. his mercy. And I think when we make music or when we lead people or when we do the things he's called us to do, it's it's because we're we're, we're with him. We're walking yeah. with him. <laughs> he's. Mm-hmm. He's the one, the king gave us our authority, kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there I you mean, go. yeah, I think you look at the life of Jesus and he came under the authority of yeah. his father. Mm-hmm. And so it's also about coming under authority. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he came and Very said, good. Not my will, but yours be done. And so every time I am asked to lead every day of my life, <laughs> like not just on a stage, most of my life is not on a stage. Right. <laughs> um, right. It's what, you know, it's mm-hmm. what Christian is saying, every point of my life, but it's coming up under the authority of Jesus and saying, not my will, but yours be done in this space. Like I may have these ideas for what should happen, but I want more than that. I want the Father's will, mm-hmm. and I'm going to come up under that authority. I think it sets us free when we get yeah. into that space to A, B, legitimately a believer in what we're saying or what we're singing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so it's not like, oh, I like that's this song yeah. or these are cool yeah. lyrics or that's this it. is in my range yes. or right. I'm, I'm really good on this kind of song. It's like I really, really, really believe yeah. mm-hmm. everything either I'm preaching right <laughs> now or everything that I'm singing right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second thing it, it allows in me and in us, I think, is to not be overwhelmingly concerned with what they think about me. Right. right. And yes, that's right. where, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you see the authority. You see a different gear. You see somebody who's not disconnected from the people because right. I'm called to lead them, serve them, right. help them, mm-hmm. um, show them Jesus, take them to Jesus if, if possible, um, proclaim Jesus, point to Jesus. I'm, I'm for them. I'm here for them. Mm-hmm. Right to serve them. Right. Right. But at the same time, I, I just think when we get too focused on what are they thinking about my preaching right now mm-hmm. or what are they thinking about mm. the way I'm yeah. singing or leading right now, then the authority just goes out the window <laughs> because we've lost the focus That's on, so good. Mm-hmm. on who he is yeah. and what yes. we're proclaiming is true about him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. You set yourself on fire. And the fire will spread. <laughs> you know, burn, burn for him, yeah. and the fire will spread. Yeah. Someone said about you, Christian, somewhere going into conference, I think at any moment now, Christian is going to combust. <laughs> yes, you know, that's very accurate. Into f- flame. There was something building <laughs> yes, yes, for that sure. all of us yes. were watching happen. I, I and I know I still have I it in my phone, but uh, our texts were not super frequent in the days of conference. But... Um, at some point I texted you, there's something on you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just, you could, you could see God bursting out, bursting through. You mm-hmm. could see him moving through you and through all of you in a really powerful and beautiful way. Um, before we wrap up, um, so now we're, you're writing songs again. So we already spent a whole year writing songs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then we recorded a lot of songs, and then we're releasing a lot of songs, and now you're back to songwriting again. Yeah. And how how do you possibly um, find the creativity, um, the rhythm to stay mm. stay at it um, after yeah. such a an intense stretch of writing and and releasing? Oh, I have personally not written a song yet this year. I'll just go ahead and admit it. I have not. I have taken a break. I have yeah. just said, let's just sit in this moment for a little bit. That'll all mm-hmm. change next week or, you know, in a couple of days. But um, I, it's just could take, change right know, now. It could, we could right, just get into could. something right, we have yeah. right now. Let's do this. But just taking yeah, a step, a step here, away, yeah. honestly, is how, right. you know, like it just getting back into the word. I mean, that's what and that's what you've been saying earlier is so much of the songs that we write it's theology and it's Mm -hmm. it's the word of god and that's where we want our songs to come out of and so it's just getting back in the word and not that i ever left but you know just like getting in that that space of just being with jesus again and letting songs come from that space but Mm -hmm. i I took a break i'm just gonna be honest (laughs) yeah yeah there's definitely there's we've already seen a lot this year Yeah. yeah and so it feels like man there's we've already taken in so much how do we express that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Continuing to make space to do that. Um, and I heard some more of the story of um, Agnes Day, like after after conference was over, and I was you know learning more about how the song came to 
came to be. And, you know, it just happened in the basement. You know, Michael W. Smith just in the mm-hmm. basement, just playing, wow. worshiping, oh, wow. worshiping God. Yeah. And just there he was in the basement, just playing the piano, and down drops this song. And 30, wow. 35 years later, yeah. we're, s- you know, s- still, still singing, singing it. it. And, yeah. man, that for me is just the goal. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. just to just to worship and just to sit at the piano or sit with God and sit with a guitar and just go, I just want to worship you and and whatever's meant to come out, right. all that we've taken in and all that we've seen, it will work itself out, just making space to do that. Um, yeah. 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 yeah I, I completely agree. I, I, f- I feel like, you know, I, I maybe right after Passion, I tried to Honestly, just pro- for me, writing is a way of processing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I was just trying to process all that Jesus yeah. was showing me at Passion. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know. And so, and then also I just, I don't, like in, a se- in this season, you know, coming off of, I take the pressure off of like, oh, I have to say something. Or mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. because, you know, th- there was yeah. a six month stretch of we were, we were honing in on what it is that God wanted it yeah. to say. And we're trying to triangulate that and figure yeah. that out. And that's right. Well, I kind of enjoy this season too because now it's like, well, let's just write a song. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like let's yeah. just yeah. let's yeah. write a song. And let's have fun today. Yeah. And and I think it's for what I found is just the consistency and enjoying the process of g- like observing, looking, trying to sense, yes, and That's then great. trying to That's great. express that. Yeah. And if I do that today, I did my great. job. <laughs> you know, and some point along, th- if you if you, I think if you're consistent in that. At some point, God's going to be like, yeah. okay, cool. Oh, by the, because, I mean, Lord Provide was on an afternoon like that. Who knew? I was just, I, I fitted, I went to do a podcast in Nashville, fitted in in that afternoon, and yeah. wow. <laughs> you yeah. know, like, yeah. and so yeah. it's just, you just, you don't know when you don't. it's yeah. going to, like, God's going to say, hey, here, here's what you needed. Yeah. Stay ready. Yeah. God does what he wants. Yep. yep. When he wants. Right. Mm-hmm. How he wants, mm-hmm. through whom he wants. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to get him on <laughs> yeah. our schedule. That's right. Yeah. We are on his schedule. Yeah. That's right. I think two big takeaways as we wrap up uh, for me. Um, if you create space, holy space, mm-hmm. God will fill it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I want to be a space maker. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go, I've got all my stuff lined out and I know how this is going to go. I want to be prepared. Yeah. I always yes. want to yeah. come prepared. Mm-hmm. I want to work hard and be prepared. But in that, I want to make space just mm-hmm. to see if maybe God has something yeah. in mind yeah. that I didn't prepare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the other thing that I want to take away from passion is um, I want that today. Yes. Mm-hmm. And there are, you know, high water marks. Uh, there's a friend of mine who always, every passion conference, everyone um, will be praying before the day or two before. And he'll always say every year, man, I just hope we have a moment like Passion 99. <laughs> <laughs> you know? wow. And I'm like, you know, we did one day. That was pretty special. <laughs> yeah. um, we did one day. Oh, three. That was pretty that was great. Pretty great. Yeah. Um, we had this big scrim that came up in Nashville in 2005 or six. Mm-hmm. And that was a pretty great moment. I was there. Mm-hmm. But he's like, I know. But that Passion 99 moment. And I turned around sometime after the whole session was over on that day, and I just was like, I think we're good on Passion 99. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a Maybe special... Maybe his text will change to <laughs> Passion 24. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I, I I talked to him about it afterwards, and he goes, I know it was almost... It was oh. a, he, no, he didn't say, oh, he didn't say oh. almost. He Man, said... I've but heard he, about Passion 99 <laughs> for <laughs> so long. But he, he did... He, it wasn't like New Day. It was like, yes, two two amazing moments in life, you know? Perfect. But Passion That's 99, cool. there was a God moment. There yeah. was a yeah. unbelievable, unplanned... Wow. God just came into this little crack mm-hmm. of space and then heaven, yeah. you know, opened up, seemed like. And it was very, very special. I was on my face down on the floor and it was powerful. Mm-hmm. And this is a moment like that. No one will ever forget it. Who yeah, was true. in that space. But yeah, I don't want to be looking back at that moment for the rest of my life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to be expecting God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To continue to do what God does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever he wants to do, however he wants to do it, whenever he wants to do it, and through whomever he wants to do it, God is doing something new. Yeah. 
Amen. Yeah. Amen. Call on Heaven is the album, mm-hmm. maybe the longest live album of all time. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <Yep. laughs> it's a double. If it was old days, it, it would be, be double, double CD. Yeah, oh, yeah, it'd be double disc. Double disc, yeah. for sure. Cannot fit 95 minutes on a CD. So um, <laughs> no, it's beautiful, it's powerful journey. Thank you, guys. And I know the team is much broader than just the three of you Absolutely. guys. And we are grateful for all of the all of the team that led out at mm-hmm. conference this year in such amazing ways. Um, and a lot of our friends are on this album as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, folks who were at Passion with us. Um, and there were so many more great things. I think we could have done 95 <laughs> more minutes of music. Uh-huh. Yeah. We definitely um, it was just a lot of, man, I love that. I wish we could put that on. Or, you know, so maybe there'll be a... A deluxe bonus uh, something okay. down the road. I don't okay. know. I, I'm not, I don't have the authority <laughs> to speak into that well, right we now. We talk but, about authority. Um, so, yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. We'll see. We need that talk. <clears throat> we need your talk oh, out yeah. there. Yep. For sure. Yeah, well, that, that was about 95 minutes. <laughs> 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 Call on Heaven yeah. is the and, album. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing journey. Amazing grace of God. Amazing what we got to experience together. Love yeah. you guys so Love much. You. and Love you. Appreciate everybody uh, being with us on this episode of the Passion and Purpose podcast. Yeah.